up everyone, this is Tyson at Titans of CNC. I've got the Titan 805 opened up in Mastercam. And in this video, I'd like to go over how I program these angle holes that I've got on the side of this part. But as you can see, these holes are in an angle and it's at a different angle than the flat surface that's at the top of the hole. We're gonna use this Ken tip drill to give it a nice flat surface and to start the hole so then we can come in with this longer SGL drill afterwards. That surface is gonna keep the tip straight and now the drill is gonna have a nice flat surface for this drill to come in and start. Because it's a pilot hole, it's gonna keep the drill straight when it's going all the way in. So I'm gonna show you how I programmed this in Mastercam and I'm gonna go over the speeds and feeds and show you what tools I used. So I've got my drilling cycle window open. Let's take a look at what point I selected. You can see I've got one hole selected and I really just selected the solid of this hole. So I just clicked on that and it generated the geometry for it. Instead of selecting all the holes because they were coming in at that odd angle, I just selected one and then I'm gonna do a transform tool path to rotate this pass all the way around the part. So in my tool settings, I have tool number eight, which is my 315 pilot drill, the eight millimeter pilot hole. For the speeds and feeds that I used, I went with 195 SFM and a feed rate of 1 thousandths and 8 tenths, so 0 0.0018. So it ends up being a feed rate of about 8 inches per minute. We're not going to go very deep with this drill though, so we're going to go nice and slow with it. Now on the setup tab, I'm using the upper left side for my work offset, and for my mill type, I have plane rotation selected. Now this is normally where I go and I select a tool plane that works with what angle that I'm coming in with the tool. So with this tool, what I found out I could do is I could actually click on derive from geometry and that's gonna generate a work plane depending on what my hole selection was. It's gonna set a proper work plane for this drill depending on what angle that hole's coming in at. So after the setup tab, there wasn't really anything else here that I really had to mess with until the linking parameters tab. So we'll click on that. For the clearance, I told it to back off two inches and that's from the top of the hole. And that's to give this tool some space every time it backs off and rotates to the next position. For the retract distance, I set that to 100 thousandths and that's incremental. The top of the stock, that's set to the top of the hole basically. And then for the depth, I set this to incremental because it was set to the top of the hole and I told it to go in negative 0.3, so 300 thousandths deep. So it's just barely going in on the tip of this drill and just enough for it to start the hole for the longer SGL drill to come in afterwards. And that's pretty much it for the settings on Mastercam, so we're gonna hit okay. So after generating my first pilot hole, what I did was I took that pass and I went to transform tool path. I selected that operation, it's operation 20 in my program, and I told it transform type rotary rotate. And then I went into the parameters for the rotary rotate and I told it to rotate three times around the part at 90 degrees to get that angle number I went 360 degrees and I divided it by four because there's four of these holes all the way around the part. I only need to tell it to do it three times though because we already have one hole programmed. So three times at 90 degrees and then that gave it the other three holes around the part. Now after this transform toolpath, I have another set of pilot holes. These pilot holes are on the back of the part. Instead of reprogramming that pass, I just duplicated toolpaths 20 and 21, the pilot hole and the transform pass. So 22 and 23 are a copy of those previous passes. For that one, I just reselected the hole and I clicked on the back hole here. It's coming in at a different angle than the front holes, but because I selected in my setup, and I told it to derive from geometry, Mastercam took care of all of that. I didn't have to create a new tool plane for that new hole. 
We just used the derive from geometry settings and it knew what angle to come in for this back hole. After the Ken tip, we have the SGL drill coming in. This one's eight times D. It's also a 315 diameter drill. Once again, I duplicated the passes from the previous operations. So I actually just copied 20 through 23 and I made a duplicate of them for 24 to 27. These are the same drilling cycles, except I changed the tool and the speeds it feeds. So I've got tool number nine. For this drill, we went with 265 SFM and a feed rate of about 13 inches per minute. I went in Mastercam and I told it two thousandths per tooth. That comes out to about 13 inches per minute. But all my settings are the same as the previous tool. Plane rotation derived from geometry. It's just in our linking parameters, I changed the depth to minus 2.25. We're going in two and a quarter inches into the part. I made sure to change the settings for 24 and toolpath 26. And I made sure to change the tool that was being used. We have the same toolpath, it's just going in deeper with a longer drill. So as you can see, the programming was pretty easy to do in Mastercam. We had that odd angled surface that we were trying to come in with the drill. So coming in with just the SGL drill would give us problems when we would hit that angle and it would try to make the tip of the drill walk. But then coming in first with the Kentip FS with the flat bottom head, we're able to give it a nice surface to start the hole out and then come in with the longer drill afterwards. So thank you very much for watching. I hope this was very helpful and I'll see you next time.